Hello everyone, my name is Raphael and welcome to Network Engineer Pro. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to configure SSH on a Cisco router. But first, what is SSH and why should you even care? Well, you're working as a network engineer and you just racked and stacked a brand new router or switch in your IT closet or maybe somewhere in the data center. You connected to it with that awesome blue console cable on the device's console port. You gave it a management IP address and now you can ping it. But now you need to connect and manage it remotely, right? Obviously, you don't want to have to be on site physically connected to the router's console port every single time you want to configure it. So what are your options? Well, one option is Telnet. Sure, it's easy to set up, but it's not secure. That's right, guys. Everything is sent in clear text, so data like usernames and passwords can be seen when doing a packet capture. So it's a security risk, right? But don't just hear it. Give me 60 seconds. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean when I say that Telnet is unsecure. All right, so if you look in the upper right-hand corner, you're going to see I have router 1 and router 2. And I have a packet capture running on router 1's gig 00 interface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Telnet from router 1 to router 2. Then after that, we're going to look at the packet capture and see what it shows us. Get in here. Um, all right, so I'm going to go to privilege mode, and I'm going to say Telnet, and I'm going to Telnet to router 2's IP, which is 192.168.1.2. All right, so it's asking us for a username to log in. So the username is admin. The password is Cisco. And I want you guys to remember that. The username is admin, and the password is Cisco. Now let me just do a quick show command, show IP interface brief. All right, good, good, good. All right, so now that we have telneted from router one to router two successfully, we logged in, we did a show command. Let's look at the packet capture really quick. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna filter all of this out. I just wanna say telnet, so I only see the captures that are using the protocol telnet. So here we have telnet, we have some information. Let's go ahead and just scroll down and let's just see what we see. So, okay, so we have a username prompt, right? When it prompted us for our username, and what I want to say is, what was our username? Our username was admin, right? So you can see here in the data, right? That's the first letter that we typed. So let's just keep going down. A D M I N. Whoa, <laughs> hold on. That's the username I sent in clear text in this in this packet capture. Let's keep going. Okay, so here it's prompting us for our password, as you can see right here. Let's keep going down. C. Hold on. What was our password? Our password was Cisco, right? C I. S C O. Holy cow. Our password is here in clear text. This is a big no, no. This is a huge security violation. Let's keep going. Okay. So now we can see the prompt of router two that showed up show. What was our command that we did? We did show IP interface brief, right? S H space I P space I N T space B R I brief show IP interface brief. And it showed us and look at this output that router two gave us. The output from the show IP interface brief. All of this is in clear text. We cannot have this. I'm sure we can all agree that we're going to throw that telnet option out the window. The other option is going to be SSH. SSH is a protocol that stands for secure shell. By default, it uses TCP port number 22 and it's used to remotely access and manage devices. And the great thing is that it uses encryption to make sure that the data that's transmitted is secure. With that being said, let's head to the CLI and get SSH configured. All right, so we're finally ready for the configuration portion of this video. What we're going to do is we're going to configure router two for SSH. And the goal at the end of this is to be able to successfully SSH from router one to router two. Now we have a few tasks to get this accomplished. Step one is going to be to configure a host name. Now this router is a brand new router. The only configuration that's on this device is going to be the IP address on gigabit zero slash zero, which in our example is going to be 192.168.1.2. So like I said, step one is to configure the device host name. Step two, we're going to configure an IP domain name. Step three is to configure and generate an RSA key pair. Step four is to create a user and step five is to configure the VTY lines. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go into config T and we're going to give the device a host name. Since we're using router two, I'm just going to keep it simple and say R2. After we've configured the host name, let's go ahead and configure the IP domain name. So I'm going to say IP domain dash name and we're going to go with network engineer pro.com. Great. Now that we've created the host name and the domain name, let's generate an RSA key. So I'm going to say crypto, oops, crypto key generate RSA. Now, when I hit enter, 
you can see that the name for the key is going to be r2 dot network engineer pro dot com that is a combination of our host name and our IP domain name now by default it will if you hit enter it's going to generate the key with 512 bits let's go ahead and use 1024 great now that the key has been generated you can see here that SSH version 2.0 has been enabled you have two versions, SSH1 and SSH2. SSH2 is gonna be the preferred option. Now that we have done that, let's go ahead and create a user. So we're gonna say username admin, and I'm gonna give it a privilege level of 15, and the password is gonna be Cisco. Great, so we're done with step four. Let's go ahead and go to step five and configure the line VTY. So I'm gonna to go to line VTY zero through four, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say login local. Now, what this means is that when you try SSH to this router, it's going to ask you for a username and it's going to look inside the local database for that username. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to say transport input and we're going to hit question mark really quick because I want to show you something. By default, you're going to be able to SSH and Telnet into this device. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that we can only SSH. We don't want to be able to Telnet into this router. So we're going to go with transport input SSH. If I wanted to be able to only Telnet, I would say transport input Telnet. If I didn't care and I wanted to be able to SSH and Telnet, I would just say transport input all. So now that we've done that and configured SSH, let's go ahead and test and verify that we can successfully SSH from router one to router two. So the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna SSH from this router to another router. And the way to do this is SSH-L. And I'm gonna specify the username that I created earlier. And I'm going to put the IP address that we're going to be SSHing to. This is going to be router 2's gig 0 slash 0 interface. Excellent. I've been prompted with a password. And the password we created was Cisco. And again, it's checking that login local command on the VTY to use the local username that we created earlier. So now that we're successfully SSHed into router 2, let's do a, a quick show command. Show IP interface brief. Awesome, it works great. So let's hop back on router two. And what I wanna do is let's look at some show commands. Let's do show SSH. This is a good command. It's telling us that we have SSH version two and we have an inbound, inbound and outbound connection. And the username is gonna be admin. Another helpful command that I like to do is show TCP brief. The output of the show TCP brief command is telling us that there is an SSH connection, right? Port 22 to our IP address from this IP address, 192.168.1.1, which is router one's IP address. And the state is established. And that's what you wanna see when it comes to TCP. Next, what I wanna show you, I wanna show you a packet capture, right? So I've been capturing on router one's gig zero slash zero interface. Now that I have Wireshark open, what I'm gonna do, let me move this over just a little bit. And I'm gonna specify only SSH. So we can see all the SSH packets that have been going on. And look here. so. Look at all these encrypted packets. So before, when we opened the Telnet portion, we were able to see exactly what the username was and the password and the output of the show commands that we tested. But if you see here, all this is encrypted. We can't see it. So I'm going to keep scrolling down and look at all these packets. They're all encrypted. We're not able to see the contents like we did with Telnet. So this is why you want to use SSH because it's more secure. In a real production environment, you're almost never going to see people using Telnet. All right, so just to sum everything up, we talked a little bit about Telnet and why it's not secure. I even showed you a packet capture during a Telnet session and we could actually see the usernames and passwords being sent in clear text. After that, we talked about SSH being the more secure and preferred option. I then showed you how to configure it and we did some show commands to verify our work. After that, we ended it with a packet capture showing that the data sent during an SSH session is in fact secure. Remember, the packet captures never lie. All right, I hope you all enjoyed this video and learned something. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below because the next one's coming out soon. Thanks everyone, have a great day.